Welcome to the Gary DeMar Blogcast. This audio is brought to you by Canon Press. Welcome to the Gary DeMar Blogcast. The topic of today's entry is Atheism Needs Christianity. What happens to children of parents who espouse the Christian faith? Frankie Schaefer, the son of Francis Schaefer, has repudiated his father's work and much of his own work he did with and for his father. Josh Harris has denounced the faith of his father, Greg Harris. Jonathan Merritt is promoting same-sex everything. His father is James G. Merritt, the senior pastor of Cross Point Church in Georgia. Ronald Reagan Jr. is a self-professed unabashed atheist. He did a video ad promoting the anti-Christian advocacy group Freedom From Religion Foundation. Appropriately, the 30-second ad ran during the 2012 Democrat presidential debate. The Democrat Party has become the Atheist Party. In 2012, the Democrats voted to remove God from the party's platform. After some pushback because of bad optics, God was reinstated probably because the party's God is the state, and the Dems are okay with that, as long as they get to define what God means to them. With the election of Joe Biden, a variant form of Roman Catholicism is being tolerated by the left. Nancy Pelosi has appealed to her Catholic faith for some time, but when it comes to abortion and homosexuality, Biden and Pelosi are far from the fold when it comes to their Roman Catholic faith. They talk religion and hold to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power, 2 Timothy 3.5. They, like many politicians, take God's name in vain. Actually, neither party cares that much for the one and only God. He gets in the way of so many godless policies. Here's some of what Ron Reagan said in that ad. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist. I'm alarmed by the intrusions of religion into our secular government. That's why I'm asking you to support the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics working to keep state and church separate, just like our founding fathers intended. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist not afraid of burning in hell. Let's be clear. The Constitution doesn't say anything about the separation of church and state. That was settled long before the Constitution was drafted and voted on. Christians believe in a jurisdictional separation between church and state. None of our founders believed in separating God from government. Does the First Amendment require a secular government, as our founding fathers intended, as Ron Reagan mentioned? Is the First Amendment violated when Christians apply biblical principles to public policy issues like stopping slavery? stopping legislation that supports women for killing their unborn babies, redefining marriage, working for true justice, and limiting the power and authority of the state. The Civil Rights Movement was founded by ministers who used biblical arguments to support their cause, even if some of them today, like Reverend Al Sharpton, Reverend Jesse Jackson, and Reverend Ralph Warnock, who is the Democrat senator from Georgia, abused their claims to be following God's will. The anti-slavery movement in Great Britain and the United States was led by Christians. Atheists can't account for why enslaving people is morally unjustified. If we are all biological accidents, as atheists claim, why shouldn't the white accidents own and sell the black accidents, and vice versa? I wonder what Ron Reagan would say to Democrat Senator Cory Booker, who appealed to Micah 6-8 to defend one of his policies. He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? Here's the thing. Atheists use Christianity in order to beat Christianity. It is easy to point to medieval atrocities, etc., but these are only atrocities to us today because we are viewing them through the lens of a Christian worldview. If someone went to the Roman government 2,000 years ago with some complaint of justice or past atrocity, the taking of native lands, demands for reparations, etc., the response would be, who are you? You are not a citizen, after which a death sentence would be proclaimed. As an atheist, Ron Reagan can't account for goodness, love, and justice because we are, given the dictates of atheists, animals. 
Louis Dartnell begins his book, Origins, How Earth's History Shaped Human History, with these four words, we are all apes. Actually, we're much less than apes given the operating assumptions of atheists. We're descendants of pond scum. John West of the Discovery Institute had this to say about the real-world implications of Darwinism. The religion of atheists like Ron Reagan is a must-interview with J.C. Derrick in World Magazine. The interviewer asks Derrick, Where has Darwinian thought had the most influence on society today? Derrick answers, The area of faith. Darwin's theory wasn't just about change over time. It was that we're part of an accidental process. So Darwin has been the greatest gift to people who would like to deny that God exists. But it's gone way beyond that. We've seen Darwinism used to devalue human life because Darwin thought humans are basically animals. At the end of On the Origin of Species, he says it's through death, disease, and starvation that the best things have come about in nature. The interviewer then states, It seems like some of these ideas are not always connected to Darwin because people read On the Origin of Species without reading his later book, The Descent of Man. Derek responds, Exactly. I have met scholars who say Darwin has nothing to do with religion or morality. It's just about science. I ask, have you read The Descent of Man? No. That is where Darwin talks about religion, morality, mind, and social policy, about how he thinks we're destroying the human race by inoculating people against smallpox and helping the poor. The interviewer then states, let the weak die on their own. Correct, Derek states. Darwin was a kind and compassionate man, so he worried about the implications, but that's what he thought the theory meant. He thought that if we follow reason, we probably shouldn't be doing things to help the people he thought were defective. When atheists argue that it's okay for the state to kill unborn babies, atheists are using the state to enforce its beliefs. Forcing schools to promote atheism is not neutrality. The leftist anti-Christian hate group Southern Poverty Law Center has a version of Amos chapter 5, verse 24 engraved in stone outside its offices. Now, this is an organization that denies Christianity and wants to keep religion out of everything. It was a favorite Bible verse of Martin Luther King Jr. It was the civil rights movement and many religious leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. and others who, based on Christian convictions, pushed back and made the view of Darwinism unfashionable. You see, atheists can't live consistently with their matter and motion worldview. So they borrow the moral shell of the Bible and redefine its language to suit their bankrupt worldview. What does Amos 5.24 say? But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. But given atheistic presuppositions and assumptions about the nature of matter and the nature of reality and the nature of our own origins, there is no such thing as righteousness and justice in an atheist worldview. On March 16, 1776, by order of Congress, a day of humiliation, fasting, and prayer was proclaimed where people of the nation were called on to acknowledge the overruling providence of God and bewail their manifold sins and transgressions and, by a sincere repentance and amendment of life, appease his righteous displeasure and, through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, obtain his pardon and forgiveness. This proclamation alone destroys Ron Reagan's assumption that our founders kept religion out of politics. Congress set aside December 18, 1777 as a day of thanksgiving so the American people, and I'm quoting, may express the grateful feelings of their hearts and consecrate themselves to the service of their divine benefactor, on which they might join the penitent confession of their manifold sins, that it may please God through the merits of Jesus Christ mercifully to forgive and blot them out of remembrance. Congress also recommended that Americans petition God, and I'm quoting, to prosper the means of religion for the promotion and enlargement of that kingdom, which consists in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. On April 30th, 1789, George Washington took the oath of office with his hand on an open Bible. And after taking the oath, it's been reported that he added, I swear, so help me God. Following Washington's example, presidents still invoke God's name in their swearing-in ceremony. The inauguration of Washington was followed by divine services held in St. Paul's Chapel performed by the Chaplain of Congress. 
Atheists like Ron Reagan cannot account for what's right or wrong, moral or immoral, just or unjust, given the operating assumptions of a materialistic, microbe-to-man worldview, or dismiss how Christianity was one of the firm foundation stones of our nation. Thank you for listening to the Gary DeMar Blogcast. For more from Gary and American Vision, check out the American Vision Collection in the Canon app.